I just finished my new lightsaber that actually burns things. Not only that, but it can switch between having a regular Neopixel blade and a fiery blade that burns at over 3000 degrees. This is the hilt. At first glance, it may just look like an ordinary Star Wars prop with a standard high-powered LED blade. However, remove the internal chassis, plug the battery half into this fuel chamber, and you get a blade made of fire instead. See, I wanted to build another real burning lightsaber, but at the same time, I wanted something that I could also swing around a bit more. And since I couldn't come up with a way to make the burning fuel stream stay ignited upon swinging just yet, I made this instead. A hybrid lightsaber with a splitting internal chassis. Moving on, the hilt is made mostly from hardware store parts. The main body is comprised of a sink tailpipe as well as EMT conduits from my last lightsaber. and the handguard is a laser-cut and polished piece of steel. The rest of it is mostly random screws and scrap pieces I found laying around in various places. Per usual of my build process, the chassis and the rest of the pieces that needed to be modeled were all done in Fusion 360. Now, I spent a LOT of hours designing the chassis. This process took so damn long for a number of reasons. Let's look at the criteria that this chassis needed to meet. Forget the challenge already presented by needing to fit all the electronics securely inside a 1.5 inch diameter. It also needed to be removable and basically operate independently from the hilt. That being the case, permanent fixtures on anything were not an option. It needed to deliver power to two completely different systems and therefore had to be modular. Furthermore, the hilt had to be kept at a respectable length while also minimizing the fuel capacity loss for the other chassis unit. So it was necessary for the battery housing to take up as little room as physically possible. I also wanted to design it so that ideally the retention screws on the NeoPixel unit would also be placed in the same positions as the retention screws and or operating switches on the burning unit. Despite all these challenges, I eventually finished a suitable design. Then the parts were all 3D printed on a nylon SLS printer. This is a special kind of 3D printer that works by fusing together layers of nylon powder with a laser. The blade was also made by me. It's a thick-walled polycarbonate tube intended for dueling in case my clumsy ass accidentally smacked it against something or anything of that sort, putting the expensive high-powered NeoPixels at risk of breaking. The chassis also has many metal elements, such as rods that let the wires run to the blade connector mostly unseen. Since I don't have a metal 3D printer to accomplish the look of metal housings, I laser cut several patterns out of thin sheets bent them around a radius, and then epoxied them onto my nylon parts. As for the electronics, most of them came from the custom saber shop. The whole thing is powered by an 18650 lithium-ion battery. The soundboard used is called a Golden Harvest, which is accompanied by this seedling circuit that I bought for additional programming and recharging. The speaker is found down here, and all the necessary connections meet at this connector. Let me tell you that soldering all this was a pain in the ass. Frankly, I'm proud of the fact that there are seven separate wires running throughout the NeoPixel blade unit, and you can barely see two of them. The finished chassis can effectively be divided into three sections. The power unit, the crystal chamber, and the emitter. The power unit houses an 18650 lithium-ion battery as well as most of the important electronics such as the speaker and the soundboard. Onto the other half of the chassis, the crystal chamber is there to look cool. Yeah, that's... that's about it. Finally, the emitter serves as the blade holder. The blade connector circuit board is inside here, and this momentary push button on the back is activated by a mechanical switch on the hilt. The finished chassis came out quite nicely. There are tons of different settings and effects, such as tip drag, force push, and blaster block that can be selected from the board. There are 12 sound fonts included with the soundboard, but more can be added. You can do things like check the battery level or adjust the volume, and many more features. Too many for me to feel like displaying all in this video. Overall, it came out to be a beautifully functional piece of work. 
But we're not done yet, because there's also the other function of this saber. Credit to Alan Pan for being the original creator of the lightsaber mechanism that makes this whole thing work. This really is his invention. All I did was make my own version compatible with an LED stick. I can take no credit in devising this fuel chamber's working principle. The fuel chamber is essentially like a syringe. A rubber plunger on the inside pushes on a liquid fuel stream on the top half of said plunger. However, instead of a physical force acting on the back, butane gas is loaded instead. There is a valve on the chassis which is accessed by a screw that is normally used as an additional blade retention screw when in neopixel mode. The valve housing was also something that I specially designed and 3D printed. Unlike the neopixel parts, the burning chassis parts were done on a markforged printer. The momentary push button is still used to turn on the saber itself and an ignition coil made of nichrome wire. When the screw is pushed down, the valve opens and the gas at the bottom of the chamber is allowed to expand and push the liquid fuel mix through a syringe needle. At the top of the needle is the heated ignition coil where the fuel stream is set ablaze. In order to connect the power cell, there is a connector cap that goes at the bottom of the fuel chamber over the gas valve. You simply insert it, then twist to lock. Now, for obvious reasons, the fuel chamber needs to be airtight. I ran a simple test using water and just filled the fuel chamber up with gas, and then submerged it in the water to see if bubbles would come out. If they did, that means I would need to seal those spots with more JB Weld. I also made this emitter piece, which is threaded and removable. While the blade's heat emission isn't that far, I thought it wise to make it out of metal anyways in case the plastic on a 3D print would melt. I used a fairly similar process as before for decorating the burning chassis, basically just a bunch of thin, laser-cut sheets of metal that I bent and epoxied onto the chamber. A quick disclaimer about the fuel mixture for my lightsaber. Its primary component is methanol, which is toxic when ingested, inhaled, and absorbs through your skin. If you ingest a full fuel chamber and do nothing, you have a solid chance of dying, and surviving means you could possibly go blind forever. The antidote is ethanol, and I may or may not have experienced all this the hard way after taking a pressurized chamber to the face and spent the next day feeling absolutely horrible. So how do you go about making real-life lightsaber fuel? The standard fuel mix is a 2 to 1 ratio of methanol to acetone, respectively. These ratios can be modified based on weather conditions, but ideally you want to keep the acetone as low as possible since it creates impurities in the form of orange flames. Though keep in mind those impurities can be intentional like shown here, as changing the composition of the fuel mix changes its color as well. I like to add boric acid to my fuel to give the flame an emerald green. The reason that we use acetone in our fuel mix is that it has a higher vapor pressure than methanol, and therefore lets it ignite more reliably. To load our fuel chamber, we first push back the rubber plunger with gas, then we fill it up with our fuel mix via a syringe. After that we put the valve over it in a closed state, and then we fill the back with butane. And that's it! Okay, let's have some fun with this thing. And for some more fun, I threw together these clips of me using the lightsaber in NeoPixel mode. <laughs> 